Welcome back to a discussion on Solaris 11 networking. We'll pick up from where we stopped our last segment on networking. I'm trying to SSH to a Solaris 11 text based installation uh, where we have four network boards. We're going to play around with those four network boards that we have. Let me switch user to root and maybe uh, list down the network boards that exist on the system. There are four ports as you can see one of which is active in fact net zero is the active one even though the other ones are also showing the link to be up by looking at the uh, network port which has IP address assigned to it we can see net zero has a v4 IP address as well as a version 6 IP address assigned to it so that's the only network port in use let's play around with the uh, rest of the network boards that we have in the system, but before we do that uh, I just wanted to highlight what we are planning to discuss here um, Like every other component of a system network port also uh, uh, Is a single point of failure. So we are now looking at the different high availability options that we have at the network uh, Component of a Solaris machine. So our network port cannot be a single point of failure in case if the port fails Obviously, I would lose access to the machine that shouldn't be the case in Solaris 11 high availability can be achieved by three different means one is link aggregation also known as Trunking the second option of course is DL DLMP that's dynamic link multipathing and then we have the internet protocol multipathing IPMP the first two link aggregation and the DLMP operates at the link layer meaning we will be uh, dealing with the DLADM command while configuring the link aggregation and DLMP whereas IPMP or the internet protocol multipathing is at the IP layer and we use the IPADM command uh, to operate on the internet protocol multipathing. We'll take it uh, one by one. Uh, first, let's take a look at the link aggregation, which is also known as trunking. The principle is very simple. We have two or more ports grouped together as an aggregated link by using a command. And then that aggregated link can be treated just like any other link. We can plumb that aggregated link, with, we can assign an IP address to that aggregated link. As a result of that, you get an aggregated bandwidth, 2 Gbps, if you have two ports of 1 Gbps each. So treat that aggregated link just like any other port. And in case of one of the ports fail, I would still have access to the other port. The only drawback of the link aggregation is that uh, it doesn't sustain, it doesn't uh, withstand the switch lever failure. In case if the switch fails, I would lose access to the machine. Now let's uh, list the links that we have on our, f on our, on our system. There are four ports as we observed earlier. Uh, only uh, one of the ports is being used. Uh, net0 is being used. So let's play around with net1 and net2. I'm going to create an aggregated link by using a simple command create hyphen EGGR and the links that I want to add to that aggregated link is net1, net2. Remember the name of the aggregated link should contain a numeric otherwise it gives an error. So we now have an aggregated link by the name EGGR0 that has two network ports which is net1 and net2. So if net1 was 1 GB and net2 was 1 GBPS we now have an aggregated link EGGR0 of 2 GBPS bandwidth. That's the advantage we get. In case if one of the ports fail I still have access to the machine through net2. Now treat the EGGR0 like any other port. If you look at the uh, properties of AGGR0, you can see that the mode is trunk, that is it's trunk, uh, trunking is another name we use for uh, link aggregation and also there are some properties uh, that help us understand that trunking supports LACP, uh, link aggregation control protocol. So in case if your switch supports LACP, you have to configure LACP on the switch. So there is some configuration to be done on the switch. Now treat AGGR0 just like any other link. We're going to add an IP address to AGGR0. Uh, let's assign 150 as an IP address to the link AGGR0. Uh, AGGR0 slash some tag. Um, oops, we didn't plumb this interface. So let's plumb it. IPADM create hyphen IP AGGR0. Now assign the IP address. As you can see, we have managed to assign an IP address to the aggregated link layer. So the idea here is that even if one of the ports which constitutes AGGR0 fails, I still have access to the machine there. Uh, that was fairly straightforward, isn't it? Let's now remove the IP address, uh, unplumb AGGR0 link 
and then uh, delete AGGR0 and the commands are again straightforward uh, delete IP I've unplumbed it now let's run the Alladium delete hyphen AGGR to remove the aggregated link so bear in mind that one of the disadvantages of using the link aggregation is a switch level failure it cannot withstand that so from 11.1 onwards Solaris 11 uh, network engineers came up with another way of achieving high availability in the form of DLMP where each of the port that is a part of the DLMP can be connected to two separate switch and thereby we can withstand a switch level failure also. The commands are going to be the same with a minor modification. I get an aggregated link AGGR0 like link aggregation but what you need to keep in mind is that I don't get an aggregated bandwidth here. It's only fail over. Uh, that I get I, in case of one of the ports fail uh, I get high availability and for this reason earlier this project was referred to as HA only uh, again if you look at the link our net zero is active uh, we're going to create an aggregated link just the way we created while using link aggregation with only one difference of minus M here we specify the mode to be DLMP dynamic link multipathing uh, remember if I don't specify minus M DLMP then it becomes trunking uh, output of the show link command is similar to what we got earlier also we have AGGR0 that's a link aggregation which uh, is built on top of net1 and net2 the only difference you would now see is that there is no property for AGGR0 that's related to LACP it has nothing to do with LACP so there is no configuration required at the switch level if you are using uh, DLMP here uh, now we can use the AGGR0 just like any other link plumb the AGGR0 link by using create hyphen IP assign an IP address to the AGGR0 uh, by running the same old command which I now hope you are very familiar with AGGR0 slash some tag very similar to what we did earlier uh, but just bear in mind that uh, I will not get an aggregated bandwidth when it comes to DLMP but I of course it is a HA only uh, link aggregation that I get when I use DLMP. This feature was introduced in 11.1 release of Solaris 11 operating system. Now I'm going to uh, remove the whole stuff. Uh, let me unplumb it. Now let me also remove the aggregated link by running delete hyphen AGGR AGGR0. So we are through with two ways of achieving HA which is uh, 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 link aggregation trunking as well as DLMP. Now the third and the final one is IPMP or the internet protocol multipathing has been around for a very very long time very simple uh, the ports who are going to participate in high availability are put into a group called IPMP group we create IPMP group by using a simple command and keep testing whether the ports in the IPMP group are in good shape are in good health or not now the responsibility of uh, confirming whether the ports in the IPMP group are in good shape or not is done by a daemon called in.mpathd the configuration of in.mpathd daemon is in a file called etc default mpathd so in.mpathd daemon has two responsibilities to confirm the health of the ports to verify the health of the ports and it does that by two different ways it does that by looking at whether the link is active or not that's a link based uh, IPMP or it can probe a router or a system in the network by using a test IP address assigned to each of the port to see whether the health of the port is active or not that's called probe based IPMP link based IPMP works only for GLD v3 compliant uh, network ports so very simple I create an IPMP group by using a command add the network ports into that IPMP group assign the IP to the IPMP group and not to the individual network ports now if I do that my link based IPMP is ready in.mpathd demand would verify the health of the ports by see we looking at its link status if I assign the test IP address to each of the underlying network port then I get a prop based IPMP as well so let's take a look at it by running the commands simple uh, create a group add ports into the group then assign test IP addresses to each of the port there is a service called IPMP which is responsible for the whole business of internet protocol multipathing you can also verify whether the daemon in.mpathd daemon is running or not as you can see it's running and the file if we take a look at it one of the smallest configuration files in Solaris three parameters only it is a default mpathd uh, that's used by in.mpathd daemon it detects you know how much time it takes in.mpathd daemon to determine whether a port is uh, faulty or healthy that's 100 milliseconds by default in case if the 
port fails the IP address fails over to the active port and if the faulty network port is corrected should the IP address fail back or not is determined by this particular parameter should I be probing all the network ports that exist in the system or should I be probing only those interfaces or the ports that belongs to group IPMP group is determined by the third configuration parameter in fact the default works you don't have to change it let's take a look at the active network interface that exists on the system there is only one which is net zero we're going to plumb net one and net two because that's what we're going to use uh, in the IPMP group so let's create hyphen IP net one let's plumb net one let's plumb net two as well uh, and uh, let's also uh, take a look at the active network interface uh, now show hyphen IF now it's showing net one and net two as well the next step is to create an IPMP group and we use the same command IP ADM and the sub command is create hyphen IPMP uh, well by the way just in case if you're not very comfortable with the sub commands with any of these commands you can always use the help sub command that will list all these uh, useful sub commands of IP ADM create hyphen IPMP of course creates an IPMP group delete deletes an IPMP group remove add hyphen IPMP adds network interface no network ports into the IPMP group and similarly uh, remove hyphen IPMP removes those network ports from the IPMP group so let's create an IPMP group by adding the network interfaces net1 and net2 let's call this IPMP group as IPMP0 and of course now it will be listed as a part of an active interface IP ADM uh, show hyphen if if I run the command now it's going to show me net 0 net 1 net 2 along with that IPMP 0 is going to be listed there of course the state of IPMP 0 now is down because we haven't assigned an IP address remember if we are in the process of configuring a link based IPMP all we need to do now is to just create an address is to just assign an address to the IPMP 0 treat IPMP 0 just like any other interface port uh, so I'm assigning an IP address oops I missed the minus a option to add the IP address to the network port IPMP 0 uh, let me give it IPMP 0 with a tag let's say slash data or whatever now I have an IP address assigned to the IPMP group which is IPMP 0 active interface is now showing the state of the IPMP group as okay there in Solaris 11 IPMP brought in a very useful command uh, by the name IPMP stat never existed in the previous versions of Solaris uh, some of the useful switches includes minus a it gives me give me all information about this group you can see that the address of the group is 150 the name of the group is IPMP 0 it's up you can see that the inbound packets to this IPMP group is hitting only the net one whereas the outgoing packets from this group is load balanced across net one and net two the two ports that exist on the uh, IPMP group so outbound packets are load balanced. it's an important information you want to keep in mind another useful switch with the IPMP stat of course is minus G which gives you the group information uh, uh, and maybe another switch you might be interested in is minus P which will uh, help us identify whether prop based IPMP is enabled or not and along with the minus P option there is also a minus T option which will help us identify what is a target machine being used by IN.MPARTDEMON to ping uh, using the net1 and net2 interface remember net1 and net2 interface needs to be assigned a test IP address if prop based IPMP is to be configured so that's our next step I'm going to uh, run the command to assign an IP address to each of the port in the IPMP group which is net1 and net2 uh, so let's assign 201 as a test IP address on net1 and I make it a test IP address by using the tag test this test IP address will not fail over if net1 fails this test IP address will not be used for probing oops I made a blunder here let me correct the command it's not IPMP it's IP uh, M IP ADM assign the IP address 201 so this IP address is assigned to net1 I do the same thing for net2 as well so let me assign an IP address let's say 202 for net2 uh, so these are test IP addresses it doesn't fail over it is not going to be used for the outbound packets uh, let's use the minus P option to see what is the difference in the output as you can see now 
it's it's using the net one and the net two interface to ping a target the target here is a machine by the name solaris by the way if the default router is configured on this machine it'll ping the default router uh, as you can see solaris is uh, let's find out what's the ip address of solaris here using a continuous ping so solaris is a machine with an ip address 192.168.0.101 and again minus t option will help us identify what is a target being used by the im.mpartdm to ping so net1 and net2 interfaces uh, uh, are uh, uh, it pings to the uh, uh, the target to see whether the uh, state of the network ports are healthy and active or not so let me now remove it i am going to delete the address from the ipmp uh, uh, group and now i will also dismantle uh, the IPMP group uh, let me uh, remove the network ports that is a part of that IPMP group um, and let me now delete the IPMP group uh, by running the command delete hyphen IPMP and now let me unplumb the net1 and net2 uh, so that I go back to the original state with which we started so we looked at three different ways of HA uh, let, uh, I, I'll stop this uh, segment by uh, by adding one more thing. We have four network ports on this machine. What if there is a requirement for having more number of ports? Uh, so from Solaris 11 onwards, a new feature called network virtualization came into existence where I can create virtual network interface cards from the physical ports. So by using the command DLADM create hyphen VNIC, I can create virtual network interface card over a physical network, in this case net1. And if I look at the VNIC properties, I can see the VNIC is just like any other network port with its own MAC address, its own speed, etc. I can create another VNIC, let's say on a different network port, this time net2, I have a VNIC1. Uh, and if I look at the VNIC that I have on the system, virtual network that I have on the system, I have two VNIC. I can treat this VNIC just like any other physical uh, port. I can plumb it. As you can see here, it just goes through fine. And then I can assign an IP address onto this VNIC uh, that I just created. Obviously, the practical use of these VNICs we will see in the subsequent segments of this playlist. Uh, but be aware of the fact that over a physical port that exists in Solaris operating system, I can create virtual network interface card and treat that virtual network interface card just like any other physical port there. So uh, I now have it. Let me remove it. Each of the VNIC has its own MAC address as you might have observed, which is a very important uh, thing to keep in mind. Uh, let me remove the address from here. Let me unplumb the VNIC. Uh, Okay, if I try to do this, it says link busy. That's because I didn't unplumb the VNIC. So let me unplumb the VNIC by using delete IP. And now I remove the VNIC by using delete hyphen VNIC VNIC 0. Let me also remove VNIC 1 as well. Since I did not uh, plumb it, I don't have to do anything. So uh, Also keep in mind that there is a command in Solaris 11 that can be used to create a private switch within Solaris 11. It's called stub. I can uh, look at the list of stubs I have. I don't have any stubs or I don't have any private switches. That's what it means. I'm creating a private switch by running this command. The name of the private switch is stub0. And what I can do now is create VNIX on top of this uh, stubs VNIC on top of these private switches. We would be using these stubs in our later segment. So look at the command here. It's the same command create VNIC, but this time around the VNIC is created not on the physical port, but on a private switch. We will be using this private switch for some uh, tasks in the future segments of Solaris 11. So we have two VNICs created over the stub and speed needs to be uh, looked at here. It's a very interesting uh, observation to make. I'm removing the VNIC, uh, VNIC 1 and VNIC 0 created over the stub and I'm going to remove the stub as well. We will make use of the VNICs over the physical port. We will make use of the VNICs created over the stub.